Hi everyone and welcome back for episode 2 in our quest series on UE4. In the very first episode I gave you a quick overview of how the quest system works and in this episode we're going to begin making it. So to get things started I thought we'll crack on with the creation of the quest log UI. So getting the UI to show a quest log of the quests for the story, the side quests and the details that they contain. So to begin with we're going to make a new uh, folder. I'm going to call it quest system. Oh, if I spell it right, that'd be good. There we go. And in here, I'm going to make a folder called quest UI. And again in there, I'm going to add new user interface widget blueprint and this is going to be our quest log underscore UI so I open this up so this is the widget editor this is where we create our own user interface elements and the first thing we're going to do is inside our cast panel put in a uh, border now the border panel does borders but also does background colors so I'm going to do that for here and drag it into my canvas panel now at the moment it's anchored to the top left and is only going to be sized to the top left. I want mine to fill the whole entire screen. So I'm going to go to my anchors and my details panel and change that to the fill screen. Now these settings here will change to offsets. And if I change this to zero here and this to zero here, the border now fills the whole entire screen. Now I don't want my one in this particular instance to fill the whole screen so I'm going to put in a sort of margin in each offset like so and I'm going to change the colour of my background to be this colour. Okay, So I'm giving it a bit of a see-throughness to it and it's a slightly dark grey but you can do whatever you like, you can make an image if you like, do whatever you uh, want. So inside my border, um, we're going to put in the various elements that make up our UI. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a vertical, oh, wrong box, up here, sorry. No hierarchy, type in vertical, and you want a vertical box. Drag that into your border, and a vertical box stacks things inside it vertically. So I want a title bar to be at the top, and underneath it I want the content, so it's vertical, top and bottom. And in there, I'm going to have a horizontal box, which does the same as vertical, but horizontally, and an overlay. Um, I want the overlay to be above the horizontal box, so click and drag the overlay above the horizontal box. The overlay is going to handle our title bar, the horizontal box is going to handle the rest of the content. So to help me remember that I'm going to rename it title bar and window content okay so I'm going to now fill my window set content so my window content click on this and on its size it says auto click fill and that fill up the rest of the box that it's in Click on title bar. I can you click fill as well, but you can see it'd be quite large. I don't want to do that, so I'm gonna leave it as auto for now, and that means it will scale based on the content inside of it. So let's put some content inside of it. I'm gonna put in a text, and the text I'm going to horizontally center and vertically center, and that's gonna be our Windows uh, text. So I'm gonna call it the quest log. And also in here, I'm going to put a button onto the overlay. And the overlay allows that these two can be moved around each other. Okay, it can be, they can stack them on top of each other. Uh, so this one I want on the right, so I'm going to put it on the right and vertically align it. And then I'm going to put a bit of text on the button so drag some text onto the button and I'm going to change the text to put a cross in there and um, 
at the moment the button is sort of a greyish colour so let's change that to a red so I'm going to click on the button in my hierarchy and in appearance tab and its details I'll see colour and opacity I can click on that to change the colour of its contents or I can click on the background colour to change the background colour of the button so I'm going to click on the background colour and I want to make it a sort of ready sort of colour and at the moment it's a bit of an odd shape it's like a rectangular shape I'm going to make it a big fat button so let's put a size box in there so I can't just drag a size box into here what I want to do is put a wrap this button into a size box panel and the easy way of doing that is by right clicking the button wrap with size box and the size box I can dictate its height and its width so if I go to width I can type in say 50 and its height I can type in 50 and I've now got a nice square button okay the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to now fill in this content down the bottom here so the content of this window we're going to have three parts we're going to have up here the story quests uh, that the player has below that's going to be side quests so the optional quests and on the right it can be the de details of the quest so you click on the quest and it will show details in the panel here so this is a horizontal box so we need a vertical box here for the story quests and the side quests and here we can leave blank for the time being so let's put in a vertical box there and let's put another one in for the other side too so on both of these vertical boxes, I'm going to make their size to a fill. And this number after the fill, basically it represents their ratio that they share. So if they're both equal to 1, they'll evenly share this. But if I tweak this one down to say 0.6, you can see it gives up a lot more of its share to the other one. So here's going to be where the contents of the quest, uh, the list of the quest, sorry, is. And here will be the quest details. In here, the vocal box, we're going to put in some panels. So let's put in a text box into the vocal box. And put in a scowl, not scowl, scroll box. Scroll box into there too. And a scroll box simply scrolls, allows you to scroll content. So it's going to, be to have a fixed height and you play with a scroll up and down based on what's in there. And do that exactly again. So another scroll box and another text above that scroll box. Just like so. And I'm going to change the titles of these. So this one will say story quests. And this one will say side quests and with the scroll boxes I'm going to change them to fill both of them and I may want to give more space to my story quest or more space to my side quests so I'm going to go to my story quests uh, scroll box and change that to 0 0.6 like so because there'd be less story quests and side quests the player would have so I can indicate that by showing the size difference after that all we've got left is the right hand side which will hold the quest details now I'm going to leave this blank for now we'll come back to it later when we start making quests okay but for now that will do click compile and you should get the green tick to say this is all okay so next job is to get that to appear on our screen so um, I'm going to make a HUD widget Oh, HUD UI and the HUD widget is going to hold all of the UI that will be part of the game okay and in here um, I just want to leave this as it is for now so this is the canvas panel of the HUD I'll leave that as it is so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this widget at the start of the game in the game mode so I'm going to go and find the game mode so it's the third person game mode and on begin play I'm going to create the widget of the HUD and I'm going to choose the HUD UI 
then I'm going to promote that to a variable and that be the HUD underscore widget and from there I'm going to add to viewport okay so with that now added to the viewport um, I'm gonna want to get access to its canvas now I can't access the canvas if I look type in here I can't get the canvas because what I need to do is go back to my HUD and go to the canvas panel and turn on is variable and I preferably want to change the name of this so I'm going to go HUD underscore canvas compile it go back to your game mode and where we've set the HUD widget we can now come off of here and get that HUD canvas this can be preferably stored as a variable so let's come up there and promote to variable and that means it makes it a lot easier for us to access this from uh, elsewhere in the game so I'm going to call it HUD underscore canvas and compile this and we're done here the next job is to make it so we can actually open up the quest log so I'm going to go to edit project settings and find the input option on the left and in the action mappings I'm going to hit the plus sign next to action mappings and create a display quest log now I've already made mine so display quest log is here and you want to choose the key that you want to open it I've chosen Q and when you've done that you close the window so now if we go back to the player character So back on your player character, we can now access that display quest log action. So when we hit Q, this is all what will trigger. And from here, we can tell it to create the widget. And we can choose the quest log UI. We can promote that to a variable. So we can call it whenever we like quest log UI and then from there I can add to uh, rather than add to the viewport I'm going to add it to a existing HUD UI that's on the viewport so to access that I need to get the game mode cast this to the third person game mode And then from there, I can access that HUD canvas. Get HUD canvas. Okay, so from here, I can add child to canvas. And that will simply add this quest log UI after I drag it into the content, like so. Or I can just use my new variable. Keep it nice and tidy. This will add this quest log UI to the HUD canvas which is already dis displaying on the screen if I click compile now and test this hit Q you can see it come up all bunched together in the top left hand corner so the reason why that happens is because we haven't told it its size or anything or its positioning so let's go back to our game uh, our blueprint we've got the add child canvas this return value allows us to change things about that child so from the return value come out of there and type in set anchors and with the in anchors we're going to come out of here and go make anchors now these coordinates determine how the anchor is set if you want it to stretch to the whole screen the minimum would be the zero zero which is the top left hand corner and the maximum will be one one and that'd be the bottom right hand corner so it'll stretch between the whole entire lot and anchor, anchor to it to the whole entire screen click compile go back to your game and I hit Q the quest log now appears if I hit Q again though it doesn't disappear it just keeps spawning more quest logs so now we need to make it toggle so right back at the start where we say display quest log now we've got this variable quest log UI we can drag this out choose get 
and right click on it and go convert to validated get from there we can hook up pressed and the is not valid will go down to create quest log this allows us to check whether or not the ui that we've made show up actually exists if it doesn't exist we're going to make it if it does exist we're going to remove it so if it is valid we're going to drag up the quest log ui return pin and go remove from parent once we've removed it from parent the next job is to drag it out again choose get oh sorry not get sorry set set and we're going to leave it as blank we're not going to change it to anything click compile go back to your game and now we should be able to toggle the window off and on i've been watching uh, you've been watching uh, episode two hopefully you've enjoyed this episode join me on patreon right now and you can enjoy episode three and uh help us out greatly thank you very much and i'll see you next time bye bye